Some people get a great feeling when they go for a run called a runner's high. Makes me wonder, are we meant to run? Hey runners, Julia here for D News. Some people say that running is good for you. I firmly stand on the side of another D News video in which we claim running marathons might be bad for you. So I just stay on my couch and marathon shows just to be on the safe side. Running is a high impact sport. You'd think it would do a number on your joints and bones, but there's plenty of people who love going for a long run and research shows that we may be built for it. Though there are some people in this world who take it to an extreme. The Trans Europe foot race pushes running to its limits. Over the course of 64 days, runners will rack up over 4,500 kilometers. With such a test of endurance, it's no wonder scientists were interested in how this kind of long distance running affects the body. Over the course of the race, some of the runners had full body MRI scans every few days. As you might expect, and as other research shows, such high impact activity did a number on people's joints. Within the first 2,000 kilometers, almost all cartilage in their knee, ankle, and hind foot joints showed significant degradation. But here is the weird thing. Even as the runners continued to run the other 2,000 or so kilometers they had left, their cartilage started to regrow. Even their Achilles tendon grew in diameter. The researchers concluded that the human foot is made for running. So is that true? Are we made for running? Well, according to a 2004 Nature study, yes, we are. The researchers found certain physiological adaptations make us efficient endurance runners, so efficient that we can outrun almost every animal on this planet at a distance. This is what's called the endurance running hypothesis. It's the idea that around 2 million years ago, our Homo erectus ancestors chased their meals across the African savanna. They didn't have good enough tools to kill them, so they did the next best thing. They hunted antelope or game by chasing them across a long distance until the animal collapsed from exhaustion. So what's the evidence for this hypothesis? Well, one is the way we sweat. We evolved to chase our food in a really hot climate. Most animals release excess body heat by panting. While this might help your dog cool down on a hot summer day, panting actually gets in the way of breathing. So panting and running never go well together. For example, dogs can only run for about 15 minutes before they have to slow down. By releasing our heat through sweating, panting doesn't slow us down and allows us to run much further distances. The 2004 Nature study pointed to the way our ligaments and tendons are built. The researchers point to a specific ligament, the nuchal ligament, that helps stabilize our heads. Other running animals like horses, dogs, and rabbits have a version of this ligament, but our early ancestors like Lucy, who lived 4 million years ago, didn't have it. It only arose around 2 million years ago when we left the safety of the trees for the open savanna. Even our butts help us run, according to some of the same researchers. Most other running and galloping animals have tails that helps them balance, while humans are famous for our lack of a behind appendage. Our big bottoms make up for it, though. No other ape has such large hindquarters or upper part of the gluteus maximus. And according to research, the butt doesn't do much when we're just walking. The real power comes from when we break into a run. So one of the researchers believes that the butt is basically a substitute for a tail. It helps us balance when we run. Other evidence, like short toes, large joints, and slow twitch muscle fibers adds more to the theory that we were built to run. Even that runner's high might be a gift from evolution. In a study published in the Journal of Experimental Biology, researchers found that some animals get a high from running while others don't. A runner's high is basically a neurobiological reward. Like other reward mechanisms in the brain, it's caused from a release of endocannabinoids, the chemicals that make us feel good. So the researchers measured the levels of these chemicals in the brains of humans, dogs, and ferrets after exercise. And like I said earlier, it seems dogs and humans are some of the only animals who partake in endurance exercise. Ferrets do not. The researchers found that those endocannabinoids were released in dogs and humans, but not the lazier ferrets. So not only are we built for running, we're also built to enjoy it. We get high from it. So maybe I'll go hit the gym now. Who am I kidding? The ferret is totally my Patronus. I'm just gonna go marathon some superhero shows. If you wanna know more about the human body and exercise, go check out this Test 2 Plus playlist. For a lot of people, there's a mental block about getting themselves into the gym. So to really understand why some people do that and some people don't, we have to understand that mental block. So are you a ferret or a dog? Do you enjoy running or does it feel like torture? Let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back to D News so you don't miss a single episode. Thank you